So, a bit of a quick apology here before we get into the video. I actually made this video back in May, not long after I'd become a new dad at the start of January. So I was really into the depth of it. I decided it'd be wise to make a video in my spare time. Yeah, there's no such thing as spare time when you have a new child. So I am absolutely knackered in this video. You will see it in my face. I made a lot of errors um, in terms of some of the stuff I was saying. Not errors, but just kind of maybe use the wrong word when I should have used a different one. And yeah, there's a lot of edits. So bear with me on this one. Hopefully the future ones will be better. I'm actually getting more time now. We're in July. That's how long it's taken me to get onto editing this video, which is what I'm, I'm doing right here. That's being edited and yeah, yeah, have fun. Booting a system. See what I did there? In this video, we're going to be looking at a few different ways we can adjust things during the boot process. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at how we can modify Grub to adjust things as they're booting on the fly. So for example, say we get locked out of our system and we need to adjust the root password for whatever reason that might be, then we can do that in the Grub menu. We can jump into the Grub menu, adjust a few kernel settings and get booting. I say adjust a few kernel settings, it's actually the command line for the kernel, but we'll get into that shortly. We'll also take a look at how we can change Grub settings on a system that's already booted. That way we can make some changes, reboot the system as and when we're ready, and those settings will then be applied the next time the system boots. Finally, we'll have a quick look at the dmessage command and the journal CTL commands, which will show us a load of information about how the system booted, what it booted, if there was any failures, and more. I'll start by booting up my VM, and I'll smash escape once the BIOS screen has passed. This will allow me to enter my Grub menu for this system. I'll press F12 actually, I should be able to bypass, or at least escape, yeah, there we go, okay, so I'm just going to keep hitting escape here, should get the boot menu, there we go, okay, so let's start going through what we can do here. So we've got advanced options for Ubuntu here, but I'm just going to go into Ubuntu, and if you look at the bottom, it says you can press enter to boot the selected OS, E to edit the commands before booting, or C for command line, well, we want to press E, so I'm going to do that. And as you can see, there's quite a lot going on here. I won't go into what every setting does, but as promised, we will look at some options here. We can do things on the kernel line here. So this is the bit where we would add kernel parameters. So you can see straight away, there's a few things like read only. Um, I mean, that's actually all there is there. So we can add things here. We can just start typing. You need to know what you're typing, but we can do things here. So we can do stuff like system D dot unit equals uh, I don't know graphical dot target now I'll get into what that actually means very soon but in a nutshell what this means is if I had a desktop I could switch between command line based or graphical based so I don't have a desktop so I can't really do that so not the greatest example but system d dot unit you'll see is a target that can be defined and they are stored in the systemd folder on the system. I'll, oh, that kind of was a lot of the word system there, but I'll show you when we boot up. And it, they're in etc systemd system slash whatever. So I'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment though. But basically we're adding things to the end of this line, the kernel parameters line. There are lots of other options available. One of them is single user mode. We won't do the graphic one, as I say, we'll do what we said, which is again single user. So there's a few different options you can actually do here. So I'm just gonna go for single first. So single is one of the older ways you could get into single user mode. Other ways was to just type S. And another way is to change read only to read write and then init equals bin slash bash. And I think on some other systems, you do init equals sysroot slash bin slash sh. And then once the system was booted, you'd write chroot forward slash sysroot, which would jump into that sysroot. Um, it depends on the system, really. It used to just be a type single or s, and that would be it. 
more modern systems have adjusted how it works the best thing to do is try one if it doesn't work do another but i'll just do single let's just try that for now once you're in you'll be able to reset your password so as you can see at the bottom it says press Control x or f10 to boot so i'm just going to do that and we should see the system boot up into single user mode single user mode is essentially a way of getting straight in without a password it allows you to change your root password and then reboot so i'll just give this a moment to boot it's worth noting that you can only do this at the machine itself. So if you have a server in a data center, you can do it via ILO or iDRAC, but you can't do it over SSH or anything like that. So don't worry about it. You're not gonna get compromised unless of course you're in a dodgy data center. So as you can see, it says you are in rescue mode after logging in, type journal CTL, blah, blah, blah. So we just wanna press enter. Straight in, no password required. I can now type PS P-A-S-S-W-D for or password for short. And then enter a new password if I wanted to. I don't want to change my password. So I'm just gonna change that and then change it back. So there you go. You can see the password has been updated successfully. Now we can do reboot and we can now log in with our new password. Once you've rebooted, it won't reboot into single user mode again. So you don't need to worry about changing anything back. These are on the fly changes when you go into the Grub menu and make a change. Okay, so that's a little bit of information about how we can adjust the system via Grub during boot. There are a lot of things that you can change, as I said. However, as I say every time, I'm not here to show you every single possible way. I'm just showing you a few different ways so that you can apply it yourself do a little bit of research yourself and go further. We'd be here all day. I don't want to be here all day and neither do you. This video is about how to do it, not all the ways you can do it or all the things you can change. So what I'm gonna do is grab a terminal here so that I can just jump straight into my system once it's booted. Saves me having to use this command line here. So I'll just wait for this to boot. So now that we've booted, let's take a look at how we can adjust Grub while the system is running. Long story short, it's all in ETC default Grub. I say it's all in there, small caveat, there is other stuff elsewhere, but if you wanna adjust things as we just did, this is where to do it. So let's take a look in ETC default Grub. Grub just stands for the Grand Unified Bootloader. The main Linux command line for Grub that we edited on boot is the line starting with Grub command line Linux, this one here. You can add parameters to this line and then run update-grub to apply them on the next boot and all subsequent boots following that. So in theory, don't do this, but you could just type single here and every single time your system boots, it'll be single user mode. Don't do that. That's a really bad idea. But we could do other things like we mentioned earlier with the system d.unit equals graphical.target. That's something we could type there. So we just type system d.unit equals graphical.target. Now, firstly, make sure you spell graphical right. That's one thing. But also make sure you know what you're adding here because you could prevent the system booting. In some cases, it will just ignore invalid options, but just, just know what you're doing here before you start applying stuff. There is a directory where Grub is configured in more depth under etc grub.d. So let's just take a quick look at that. I'm not going to write those changes. So let's take a look under etc grub.d. And you can see here, there's a few different files. I'm just going to cat out, I, I don't know. Let's have a look at 30 UEFI firmware. Now it's very unlikely we're ever going to change anything here. Probably don't fiddle around too much in here. If you wanted to, you could do a little bit of research into Grub itself, start looking at the documentation for Grub, and you can maybe add your own custom configurations here. But again, I wouldn't really mess around in there too much. There's no reason I've ever had to mess around in there. So yeah, I'd just leave it. As I say, anything you really want to change on the command line side of things, just change that in etc default Grub, and then when you're done, run update hyphen Grub, and you'll see as you run that, it will search for certain stuff. It's actually moaning because it's saying that um, it couldn't find a physical volume. Now, I think I know what that is. I mentioned a minute ago about the tutorial that I did in a comment. I think I've not updated stuff since then. So actually I might find that cat proc MD stat is having a bit of a moan as well. 
yeah, you see, this is it. It's saying disks are missing. I've, I've really uh, kind of screwed this system up a bit from doing that tutorial. Basically, I was just making sure the information I was given was correct. So obviously, I was going through the process myself. And in the process of doing that, I've clearly broken my RAID. It's fine. It's not a problem. I say I've broken my RAID. I've actually just got a disk missing, quote missing. Um, yeah, so that's fine. Don't worry about that. Ignore those errors. Let's move along. I will fix that when I do the RAID video later for the thing that I said earlier. You know the video I said I was going to do? That one. Okay, so that is Grub. There are other options such as Lilo or the Linux loader, but I'm not going to be getting into those today because I don't have a system with Lilo on it. In fact, I can't remember the last time I actually used it, but there are other options than Grub. So with that in mind, let's go and take a look at the boot process itself. I'm going to jump over to the HP server for this because there'll be things failing on there. I say failing, there'll be issues on, I say issues, there'll be there'll be things wrong or things erroring or things maybe not working quite as they should, such as I like. To get the details of the last boot, I'm going to jump over to my HP server that I have up now and we'll have a quick look over there. I'll just type the IP address in and you know what, just because I think I'm going to need another one, I'm going to open another tab with another connection to that server. Okay. So first things first, let's take a look at the D message command. So you've got D message and you've also got cat var log D message. Both of them will give you the output of the boot. However, this one here, the one that's in the log directory contains details of the current kernel syslog ring buffer messages. In short, basically a live log of what's going on right now. So if I run D message, you'll see that this actually ends at 30 seconds. This is the last time that anything happened. If I run cat var log D message, so I got that the wrong way around. This one is the last boot. The D message gives you a, a running list, essentially. Um, the, the, the live view, essentially. So you can see here that this one started BP filter at 29 seconds. And if I run D message, you'll also see that at 29 seconds. But you'll see a few extra things that happened since as well. So that's the difference between the two commands. D, D message directly gives you what's going on right now. Var log D message gives you the last boot. Okay, and the reason that's useful, if I just take a look in varlog, for example, you can see the message, the message one, two, three, four, and uh, yeah, these are historical boots, basically. And to read those, you can use the journal CTL command. So if I do list boots, we can see all these historical boots that happened. So let's first take a look at the D message command. I'll just give a quick run through some of the stuff we see. And then we'll take a look at the journal CTL command. So I'm just going to scroll up here. If I come up to zero seconds, start at the beginning. Okay, here we go. So the first thing we see is the Linux version. We can then see the command line that was run essentially. So we can see I've got a couple of extra kernel parameters on the end. And now if I jump over to this other tab, we'll have a look at the ETC default grub and in here we can see I, I don't have it in here you can put it in here but i've got it in my default but i have these parameters running which basically get appended to my kernel command line and these get executed on boot so where we were pressing f10 before to edit things in grub on the fly this is something i've set previously and all this does in a nutshell is make sure that all my ethernet adapters are named eth zero one two three four and so on instead of being dynamically generated which is what happens on most modern systems so we can see the kernel parameters that were added on. We can see the server type. We can see pretty much everything and anything to do with this system. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm not even going to pretend to know what every single line here does because I, I don't know many people that would know. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure someone out there will, but it's not me. So let's scroll on through. We'll see a lot of information in here. If I scroll down a bit further, we'll see the memory that's in this system. We can see things like there will be information on, if I have a look down this left hand side, we should see, there we go, Spectre V1, Spectre V2. These are CPU bugs. So they are hardware level bugs. I have mentioned them in a previous video, 
but they are noted in the BIOS. We can see that there's a firmware level bug. And yeah, there's there's a lot of information here. There's there's a lot. I mean, we're three seconds in and you can already see how many lines I've passed. So I'm just gonna scroll on a bit further. Um, I'm not really gonna cover everything because there is so much here, but there's details on the disks that are in here, the RAID type and much, much more. I mean, pretty much everything to do with the system, like I say, is available here. We'll even see things to do with ILO in here, my USB hubs and more. So a while ago, I noticed there was an ILO bug going on in my D-Message. So I had a little look around, see what the problem was. And it turned out I just needed to update ILO. It was because my system wasn't, my, my OS wasn't compatible with my version of ILO, essentially. I won't get into the details of the package that I had to update, but yeah, that's all I had to do. I just had to update a package on my system and it turns out it, it all worked after that and I'm not seeing that error anymore. And if I just carry down a bit further, I don't think there's anything major I'm going to point out here. You can just see there's a lot of, there's a lot of information here. So have a look through D-Message. You'll see a lot of stuff in there that mean nothing and you'll see other stuff in there that mean a lot. So we can see things to do with AppArmor here. Profiles being loaded. We can see that I have a bridge set up and that is here and then these virtual bridges here so as i say there's a lot in here have a look so let's go back to that journal ctl command uh, if i have a look at that journal ctl list boots and then here we can do journal ctl b and then the number so these numbers you don't have to put the minus on there it's just these are the previous boots in the order you can also check the time and the date if you want to do it but essentially if someone says oh three days ago i had an issue well, you can come here and have a look and look for that date and run it. Not only do you get the boot up information in this, you'll also get the shutdown information in this. So if I just, let's go for 10. Never know. Uh, I can't remember when I did the ILO fix. It might have been last year, but let's have a quick look. So if I have a look in here, I'll just have a search for ILO. And apparently it's not found. So let's have a look for ILO. No, it's okay. So it's not in here. I must have fixed it well before this previous boot but if i scroll all the way to the bottom here we can also see that we are getting shutdown information so not only do we get all that boot up information let me go back to the top we get the boot up information as we did before but if i go to the bottom now we can see that this is actually shutdown information you can see it's stopping services and shut down here look so you can get information about what happened during a shutdown of a system as well as the startup of the system using this it's very very useful and you can actually see that this is two different systems here, look. So yeah, there's there's multiple logs here. And it's worth having a look, see what sort of things you can see in here, because like I say, I'm not gonna, I can't, I can't go through every single line. There is so much in here. We would be here for many, many, many hours. And I can't tell you every line that's going on in here because I don't know every single thing that's possible to know about hardware and Linux. So yeah, have a look. Any questions, obviously fire them across and I'll see if I can answer them. So yeah. Have a look, journal CTL hyphen B with the number that you can get from journal CTL hyphen hyphen list hyphen boots will give you historical boot up and shutdown information. D message will give you live running kernel information and var log D message will basically give you what you see in here. So if I actually put zero, this is my current boot up. You can see like May the 7th at this time. Actually it was an hour or so ago, uh, but yeah. In fact, is my date correct? Ah, there you go. So it's actually this one right now. My date is in UTC, hence it's a, an hour behind my actual time. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I'm going to cover on the D-Message side of things. Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover in this video. And if you felt like you learned something, then maybe do the diddly diddly thumbs up. And if you didn't, do the diddly diddly thumbs down. Don't thumbs down though, because that's mean, right? Anyway, I'll be covering run levels in the next video. And then I'm probably going to sidestep into another video, because someone actually posted a comment this one just here, and ask me a question about how they would change a disk in a RAID-based system. And that's a good question. And I didn't think about actually covering that in any of my other videos. I just showed you how to set up RAID. So if a disk fails in a RAID-based system, then how do you go about replacing that disk? Is it safe to just pull it out and pop a new one in? Depends on your system. So I'm going to be covering that in another video. I'll do a little side video on that. I did actually respond in full in this comment here. And I figured, hey, Let's turn that into a video. It's quite a useful video to do, and I will get around to doing that. Then who knows what I'm going to do afterwards. I've not long had a baby, and, well, I didn't. My wife did. But 
as you can tell, the videos are getting quite large gaps in between. So I'll probably just wing the next few videos, see how we get on with it and see what time I have available to actually do it. As you can probably tell, it's turning to nighttime now and that's when I'm getting time to do these videos. So as I say, these weren't meant to be anything major. They were just supposed to be kind of fundamental videos on Linux, just really basic ones. In fact, it was more about the hardware to start with. Then I was going to move on to basics of Linux, then probably just start covering some Kubernetes stuff. So depending on what time I get and how often I can get these videos out, I'll see you in the next one.